In this next section, we're going to be considering some concepts around stock or material management. Now, before we get into looking at the numbers around stock management, we want to consider some theory. Primarily, we want to look at what is um, the stock purchasing process within a manufacturing organisation. Now, in order to keep control over our stock and our stock purchasing, it wouldn't be acceptable for anyone within the organisation to place an order of stock whenever they realise they need it. Instead, there is a very strict procedure which would be followed in terms of ordering new stock. So, the first step in our materials purchasing process is to raise a purchase requisition. So this would be raised by the manager of the warehouse or the stores department. When they see there is a need to order new materials, they will raise this purchase requisition and send it over to the purchasing department. So we'll just note that down. The purchasing department will then raise a purchase order. So our material purchases are going to be managed centrally by the purchasing department. The department who needs the stock send this purchase requisition over to the purchasing department and they will follow up on that request. The purchasing department will then place an order with our suppliers or with an appropriate supplier for the materials we require and the quantity of materials that we require. At some point in the future then, presumably, we will receive the materials from our supplier. At the point which we receive the materials from our supplier, we will get a delivery note. The delivery note is something that is provided to us from the supplier along with the goods they have provided us with. The delivery note should confirm the quantity and the material type that has been provided to us. So this is step three in our material purchasing process. We can use this delivery note to check back against our original purchase order and see, has our supplier provided us with the goods we actually requested? And at this point, presumably, we would do some sort of physical check to ensure that all the units of our material have actually been received. Once we are satisfied that our supplier has provided us with the right quantity of the right materials, and we've unloaded them into our warehouse, our next step will be to raise a goods received note. Now, the goods received note is very, very important because this is effectively the document which will update our accounting systems with the information about that material. So our goods received note... And finally, the fifth step will presumably be the payment of the supplier. So the supplier will send us a purchase invoice to our accounts payable department, which we will pay at some point in the future. So that's our materials ordering process. Note that we mentioned our goods received note where we update our accounting system to record the receipt of this stock and the value of the stock. Every time we receive stock or if we sell stock, and we record that into our accounting system. So whenever there's a movement in our inventory, that goes into our accounting system. 
We should be able to assume, therefore, that we could look at our accounting system at any point in time and our accounting system will tell us exactly how many units of material there are in our stores department. And theoretically, this is true. Let's look at a bit of terminology. First of all, you need to be aware of the distinction between book stock and physical stock. Our book stock is our stock per the accounting records. Our physical stock, on the other hand, is our actual stock in the stores department. But I've just said, theoretically, these two things should be the same. If we update our accounting records every time there's a movement in stock, why do we need to have different pieces of terminology for book stock and physical stock? Well, theoretically, these two will always be the same. So if our accounting system says there are a thousand units of material in the warehouse, then there should be a thousand units of material in the warehouse. But there's a number of reasons why there might be differences between our book stock and our physical stock. If we think about it for a minute, what might these reasons be? So we think we have a thousand units of stock in our warehouse according to our accounting records. But actually there's only 900 units of stock in the warehouse. Why is there a difference? Well, one of the reasons we might have a difference between book and physical stock is of course, sadly, perhaps theft. So if someone is stealing stock from our warehouse, then our accounting system will tell us we have a thousand units, but perhaps someone has stolen 50 or 100 units from the warehouse. So that will create a difference. The second thing that may create a difference is human error. So if when entering stock information into the accounting system, someone enters an incorrect number accidentally, Again, that will create a difference between book stock and physical stock. And finally, the other thing that may, may create a difference temporarily between our book stock and our physical stock is just timing differences. If we order stock from our supplier and we receive a thousand units of that material from our supplier and put it into our warehouse. Now the stock in our warehouse has increased by a thousand units but it might take a little bit of time for the paperwork to go through. So it might take a bit of time for our staff to update the accounting system with that information, which means for that short period of time, again, there's a difference between book and physical stock.